what do you got to say? Huh? You think Altuve is going to hit something? You know, give him some pointers. He needs some tips on hitting. And you've got those tips. You're the best hitter I know. Happy Friday, Baylor College of Medicine and friends of Baylor. Well, I hope everybody's enjoying this lull and wonderful time because no one's paying any attention to COVID. But that's not going to last. Unfortunately, enjoy your time now because I think we're in for quite an exciting uh, late fall and maybe winter. So we'll talk about that. But let's let's look at the data for one nationally or in, internationally. You know, the United States is doing really well. We're down. But Europe is a, seeing a bit of a surge. And we've talked about Japan before. Japan is uh, quite the hot spot. And here's the hot spots in the world. You can see Europe uh, and Japan dominating in the world. In the U.S., uh, the, we're seeing a decline in cases and hospitalizations, but it's beginning to slow. In fact, it's pretty flat. And hospitalizations have actually increased in the Northeast. They're up by 10% in some parts of the Northeast. So that's a good sign, signal that things are beginning to uh, get worse again. Uh, number of deaths has fallen, that's good, but we still have 350 deaths uh, a day, which is a lot. And the real concern I have, uh, and you'll hear me say this all the time, but the bivalent booster has not really been uh, taken up by the U.S. very much. O only 10% of eligible adults have gotten the bivalent bo booster, and that's setting up the population to be quite susceptible for what's coming. So if you look at the U.S., the map, it's subtle. It's not a lot of real hot spots, but you can see increases. Uh, in the southwest, in New Mexico, and in the Midwest, in Kentucky, and upper Midwest, Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, North Dakota, South Dakota, and the Northeast. So it's kind of subtle, but it's slowly getting darker, which means more and more cases are being reported in those areas. Texas, we're, we're often way behind the Northeast, uh, lucky for us, but we're looking pretty good. Dimmitt County, God love them, they're low, and so are we. We're under, we're 23 cases per 100,000, that's down from 53. Five admissions per 100,000, very, very low. Dimmitt County, similarly low. So right now we're enjoying the world because we're in a very low risk community, but just we gotta keep our eyes open to what's going on in the Northeast and in Europe. Uh, more data from the Texas Medical Center. Our testing rate, again, looks really good, less than 3% at 2.7%. Good news is hospitalizations uh, didn't keep going up. They plateaued, we're at about 71 uh, per day. That's still 71 per day is a lot. And wastewater is beginning to flatten out. So you see the curves coming down. They're still coming down and they're still quite low, which is good. But if you look at nationally, and remember we use the wastewater as a predictor of what's going to happen over the next two weeks. Texas looks great. But if you look at the upper Midwest and the Northeast, those numbers are going up pretty dramatically. And this is a good uh, depiction from the CDC. Forget the black line, that's just the number of cap uh, places reporting. Red shows the number of sites that are going up. Uh, orange, they're also going up. Blue are the ones going down. And you can see that we're beginning to see more and more uh, wastewater um, uh, signals. So they're going up in many communities. That means we're going to start seeing a rise in cases. That's inevitable. Now, what is driving that? It's not BA5 anymore. I mean, still BA5 is the dominant strain. But BA4.6 uh, is up in some of the BA2. Uh, BF7 uh, derivatives. And so remember, we did this, showed you this uh, sort of uh, lineage chart a couple of weeks ago, but it, it's very uh, revealing. So most of the US variants are here, BA4 and BA5 in this track. And you can see the, the emerging variants are the BA4.6, the 7, and these are the ones that are going up now. They're derivatives of BA4. What's a little bit concerning is that in Singapore, which is more of a deriv derivative of BA2, there's a new, new variant called XBB. And the reason I like to look at other countries is to see what's going on with them. We can learn some lessons if we'll simply open our eyes to it. We talked about Japan. A lot of cases, but very few hospitalizations, mostly because of their vaccination rate. So what's going on in Singapore? Singapore is very interesting because they had spikes just like us with BA2 and BA5, but they're having a big spike now with XBB. Not so much in the U.S. Uh, we were, were concerned it may get here. But notice their hospitalizations have been completely flat. So why is that? Why is it that uh, despite this huge surge in XBB, which is thought to be a variant that it really is good at evading the immune system, 
they're not having a lot of hospitalization. So one, for, one thing is that they've had 95% of their eligible population vaccinated and 92% of the entire population has been vaccinated and 80% of the population of Singapore has received their boosters. So if you look at the case fatality rate, they've had 2 million cases but only 1,600 deaths. So that's a 0.08% case fatality, which is actually like a little bit less than influenza. So by having a country that is broadly vaccinated, even though they're having a surge in cases, they're not seeing a lot of fatalities. That was the point I made in, again, with Japan. That's the same in, same in Singapore, and yet we are having problems getting our population boosted. So, and this is the interesting uh, variant. If you look at, this is um, uh, uh, Omicron BA5. That's what we have in the U.S. This is Singapore, and you can see that their surge is really being driven by XBB. Good news is XBB is not in the United States yet, but XBB.1, which is a derivative of it, has been detected. There are about 16 cases. My guess is it'll start to proliferate because it's very good at evading the immune system. But if we can get people vaccinated and boosted, we need to still, if you're not vaccinated, or if you haven't gotten your booster shot, please get your booster shot. So what can we expect going forward? If we look at the United Kingdom, you know, they, they, uh, they report their data quite well. They're up 42% in cases, and they're up 48% in hospitalizations. You can see this, you know, they usually precede uh, Northeast by about a month. The Northeast is beginning to go up, so you can expect that we'll see 42 to 48% increases in the Northeast, and that eventually will come to us. So, you know, here in the, in the South and in the Midwest, we will see these cases beginning to go up. I would say we maybe have another month or so uh, of relaxing. So one of the really interesting, uh, you know, <laughs> problems we've had is why is it that we're not getting more and more people vaccinated? There's this real reluctance uh, to get vaccinated, and it's a great uh, case study to look at Marin County. Because Marin County, as you know, is a very wealthy community north of San Francisco, very, you know, well-educated, and yet they were the, sort of the hotbed for anti-vaccine movement uh, and for a long time. In, in 2011, for example, only 78% of the kindergartners in Marin County uh, had gotten their required vaccination. That was the fifth lowest of the 58 counties in California. And you know, usually we look at uh, failure to get vaccinated as an indication of a, of, of a poor community or failure to have access, but Marin County has all the ability to, to be cared for, but still very low because of the opinions about vaccination. And what happened then was there was a giant whooping cough out, uh, outbreak uh, because of the, the low vaccination rates. And then in, in 2014, there was a giant outbreak of measles in uh, Disneyland and in 2015 in the schools. And the Waldorf schools in particular, which is sort of a holistic education, had only 22% of the kids vaccinated. So they had this massive outbreak of whooping cough and measles. Uh, so what, you know, what happened? If we look now at Marin County for COVID, they're one of the highest vaccination rates. So what, what happened? You know, they went from being the worst to uh, really the best. If you look at children between 5 to 11, 80% were vaccinated against COVID. Uh, and under 5, it was five times the vaccination rate in the U.S. So what, it, what really uh, changed the minds of the Marin County uh, residents? For one, they had a very strong PR campaign that was led by the Department of Health that really focused on the, the, the myths about autism, some of the ingredients in vaccines, and the concern about the number of vaccinations kids were having. So they really tried to educate the population. They've engaged the local pediatricians to speak to all their patients and all their families to address these concerns. They, there was a huge national backlash because here's this wonderful county having all these outbreaks. So there was a lot of negative PR. But there was also an interesting story. There was a six-year-old that had leukemia that couldn't get vaccinated. And they did a ma the family did a major uh, request for the community, please get your kid vaccinated to, to help this six-year-old with leukemia. And they went to the state legislature. And the state legislature passed a law that you had to be vaccinated, mandated vaccinations. That has changed uh, the Marin County vaccination rate from low 70s to 95%. And they have been one of the best counties for COVID. So there's ways to deal with this anti-vaccine issue, but we have to do it or we're going to be really susceptible. If we don't get our population more vaccinated, we're going to see a lot of uh, disease in the fall. So I want to end today with a bunch of shout outs. First of all, the Debakey High School for Health Professions is having their 50th anniversary. 
you know, this is a school we started with, uh, with in collaboration with the uh, Harris County uh, Independent School District. Uh, it has been a fantastic school. We now have members of our faculty uh, that are started in the DeBakey High School. We have a member of our Board of Trustees who graduated from the DeBakey High School. So congratulations to the faculty, staff, uh, students, parents, and alumni. It's a really great success story of a health profession school in collaboration with, with our uh, Baylor College of Medicine. Also want to do a shout out for Teach Plus, the national nonprofit has selected 45 teachers to be part of its 2022-2023 policy fellowship cohort. And one of those is Erica De La Rosa, an English teacher at the Baylor College of Medicine Biotech Academy at Rusk Middle School. And she's been selected, so congratulations to her. This is a really another very strong partnership with the middle schools in Harris County with Baylor College of Medicine. Also, uh, there is a major children's cancer milestone. Passport for Care, a free online research uh, resource for childhood cancer survivors to access treatment, summaries, and long-term follow-up for care recommendations has reached a major milestone of 50,000 50, users worldwide. So congratulations to Dr. Poplock and Dr. Michael Fortas and our Passport for Care team at Baylor and Texas Children's Cancer Center. Of course, congratulations to the Astros. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're in the World Series and uh, they play the Phillies tonight. Lily, uh, of course, is wearing her, oh, she's, she's sound asleep, but she's wearing her Altuve jersey. She, apparently, Lily and Jose Altuve got together for a little brief hitting instruction, so I'm looking forward for him to break out against the Phillies. And finally, the results of Lily's Halloween contest are in. Lily, uh, the, the lobster and the cow were close, one and two, uh, so she is going to be out uh, trick-or-treating uh, in Dimmick County on Saturday because they're trick-or-treating on Saturday wearing the, the, uh, the cow costume, and she will be back on Monday wearing her lobster, content, uh, her lobster costume. And finally, in the Ariza Springs New uh, Haviland, uh, my favorite newspaper, above the, above the full front page news, they're honoring JC, uh, one of the horses that was most, uh, that served on Border Patrol, outstanding horse with great leadership skills. Our, our condolences go out to the entire family for JC. Anyway, have yourself a great, uh, great weekend. I can't wait to see you next week, and go Strohs. The Carrizo Springs News have said that they are gonna have Halloween on the 29th rather than on, on, on the 30th. I have no idea who is in charge, but I'm gonna have to talk to folks over in, uh, in Demick County.